welcome back to my youtube channel unfog with dr atahar parvin so in this session we shall uh, discuss uh, answer keys and uh, let us see the explanation for uh, science part from karnataka tet 2023 question paper paper 2 okay and at last let us decide whether the question paper for science part was uh, easy or it was really very tough okay many aspirants have requested me to uh, solve the science part also that's the reason why i am uh, solving it for you all okay so let us uh, start the class uh, before that please do subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed and if you are liking my work please do like and share my videos among your friends and uh, other teacher recruitment examination aspirants because uh, uh this channel is dedicatedly present for uh, all the teacher recruitment aspirants because uh, we make classes for uh, tet gpstr hstr uh, ctet kvs cris and uh, many such uh, examinations and uh, of course we have uh, paid classes also so please do join my telegram channel for uh, more information regarding the paid course also you will get the telegram channel link below this uh, video in the description okay so let us start the class okay so first science question was question number 121 so this part is from physics actually okay so the question is a current of 5 ampere is flowing through a circuit having a resistance of 6 ohms then the power in the circuit is so i have uh, showed the uh, one formula relating to power and uh, current and uh, resistance uh, i think in formula list i think i have shown so the formula is uh, power is equal to current square into resistance so just you have to substitute the value of current which is 5 amperes whole square into resistance which is 6 ohms okay so 5 square will be 25 25 into 6 will be 150 and the unit for power is watt okay so option 4 will be the correct answer to this question okay moving on next question number 122 an object is placed at a distance of 15 cm in front of a convex lens of focal length 10 cm then the image is formed at a distance so, so you have to find the distance of the image in this question it is a question from optics right so here we can uh, solve this problem using the lens formula which is 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v minus 1 upon u okay here f is focal length v is image distance and u is object distance from the lens okay now because the object distance is uh, given as 15 cm and the object distance is uh, uh, to be taken in front of the convex lens so that uh, object distance will become minus 15 okay so minus 15 and here you have minus in between right so it will become plus so it will become 1 upon 10 is equal to 1 upon v plus 1 upon 15 but we want to find the image distance right so write 1 upon v here and send 1 upon 15 in the left hand side you get 1 upon 10 minus 1 upon 15 so you are 1 upon v will be 1 upon 30 and because you have to find the image distance you have to do the reciprocal which will be 30 cm and of course it will be a real image okay so option 1 30 cm and that to with a plus sign will be the correct answer for this question okay next question number 123 One atomic mass unit is equivalent to, of course, it is equal to 931 mega electron volt of energy. Okay, so if you have attended all my paid classes and free classes, then I am sure you will be very like easily able to answer these three questions because we have discussed all this in our classes. Okay. Next question number one twenty four. Three ear bones, hammer, anvil, and stirrup performs the function. Four options are amplification of sound, convergence of sound, collection of sound, divergence of sound. So now this question is a new question for us. But uh, if we use a little common sense, we can reach up to the correct answer that it is amplification of sound. Just you only imagine why would our ear bones converge or diverge or collect the sound? Correct. So. the function may be 
possibly amplification of sound only right okay so in competitive exams sometimes we will have to guess the answers also and uh, if we think uh, in a proper practical way most of the time we can give the correct answer to such general questions like this one okay so here i am showing you the picture of these three ear bones that is hammer also known as malleus and uh, and wheel which is also known as incus and stirrup which is also known as tapes so these are in order in our eardrum okay next question number 125 the magnitude of buoyant force depends upon of course we have been talking about the uh, buoyant force in one of our classes so the formula to calculate buoyant force is rho gv rho is density of the fluid g is acceleration due to gravity and v is the volume of the object so the correct answer will be density of fluid rho because rho is there in the formula right nothing else is there from the options weight temperature pressure that is not there right so density is there in the formula so the correct answer will be option for density okay next question number 126 velocity time graph for non uniformly accelerated motion is represented by so even this is a very general question see see the term non uniformly accelerated motion if you see options 1 2 and 4 you have straight lines right either they are steeped upwards or they are steeped downwards or it is horizontal but they are all straight lines means they are some way uniform correct one is increasing one is decreasing or one is a constant correct but the third graph is showing some non uniformity right so even if you don't know what is non uniformly accelerated motion with some general common sense you can guess the correct answer to this question okay so i believe that uh, this is a very easy question so option 3 will be the correct answer to this question question number 127 A rectangular coil of copper wire is rotated in a magnetic field. The direction of induced current changes once in every. Of course, in a magnetic field, when a rectangular coil is rotated, no, then the direction of induced current is changing in every half revolution. So, option three will be the correct answer. Next, question number one twenty-eight. advance sunrise and delayed sunset is due to of course we have been discussing this uh, questions no in uh, paid course revision classes so i am very glad that uh, the questions which we have been discussing in the revision classes for paid course have come directly in the examination so this uh, for this reason no actually i am very happy and i am glad also that uh, at least i think uh, around 30 to 40 percent questions have come from the revision classes itself okay so the question was advance sunrise and delayed sunset is due to so it is of course atmospheric refraction of light so exactly this question only i have discussed like this only uh, that uh, it the apparent position of the sun and the actual uh, uh like uh, position of the sun is a uh, different when you compare with the uh, what the observer is seeing okay so that is happening because of atmospheric refraction of light okay next question number 129 mm, this is also like a uh, very like expected question because i have given the table only in the revision class their calorific value of hydrogen was asked in the question i think uh, hydrogen fuel i think something like that was there but i gave the table and i told that lpg is the most important one this time they may ask i had told so that question has come here so the calorific value of lpg is 55000 kilo joule per kg okay next question number 130 the chemical used for manufacturing naphthalene balls of course it is coal tar next 131 an example for metalloid of course it is silicon silicon is a metalloid right then the scientist who introduced the word mole so this one must be little new question because uh, 
this scientist is not very famous sir. so wilhelm ostwald he had given this word mole actually okay uh, but few may get confused with uh, avogadro because avogadro's number is there but then the common sense which we have to use here is avogadro is not in the option at all we know thomson is for electron uh, dalton is for atomic theory levoisier we of course don't know about him but uh, ostwald to is a chemistry guy right at least that we know so with that thing i think we can give this answer okay next uh, question number 133 ch3oh c2h5oh c3h7oh the next number of the homologous series of course it should be c4h9oh because uh, see the series ch3oh c2h5oh c3h7oh if you see the series next should be c4 h9 only right so it should be c n h 2 n plus 1 oh they are talking about alcohol here okay so i think this also we have shown in the revision class okay next uh, question number 134 the gas released at cathode in chlor alkali process so this is also a very general uh, uh, question because in any alkali process for that matter Ah, uh, this I was talking about homologous series of alcohol. No, so this is the series I have given you for your uh, reference. Okay, now coming back to alkali process. No, in any alkali process, no, at the cathode you will have hydrogen. Okay, and uh, when we talk about uh, chlor alkali process, chlorine will be as yeah at the anode, and hydrogen will be at the cathode. So that's why hydrogen gas is released at the cathode in this process. Okay, option one will be the correct answer. Next question number one thirty five. The maximum number of electrons in a shell is, of course, we all know that we have to use the two n square formula. See, I mean to say, we all by all those aspirants who have attended all my free classes, at least, okay. So the paid aspirants, of course, they must have done this many times in my classes. Uh, anyway, so if you have watched my free classes on. Uh, Uh, atoms right from gpstr then you understand that the formula which we use to find the number of electrons when the shell is given the name of the shell is given it is 2n square right so here if you see for m shell it is 18 number of electrons are there okay next question number 136 read the statements given and select correct answer from the given options The endoplasmic reticulum is to serve as channels for the transport of materials. Okay, this was statement one, and statement two is it also functions as a cytoplasmic framework, providing a surface for some of the biochemical activities of the cell. See, in this question, without knowing anything about endoplasmic reticulum, also one can tick that both the statements are correct because uh, they have given so much details. If they are giving wrong statement, why would they give so much detail about endoplasmic reticulum? okay so that part is a guessing part now coming to the actual knowledge part uh, the endoplasmic reticulum uh, actually one is a rough endoplasmic reticulum another is smooth endoplasmic reticulum and it actually serves as channels for uh, transportation of materials and uh, also it is like a skeleton for a cell you can say so it is uh, having a function as a cytoplasmic framework which provides surface for some of the biochemical activities in the cell okay so both statements regarding endoplasmic reticulum are right here option 4 will be the correct answer okay next question number 137 the tissue present in alveoli of lungs so simple squamous stratified squamous ciliated columnar or glandular all four types are epithelium uh, cells only but uh, particularly the tissue which is present in alveoli it is actually uh, simple squamous epithelium okay so you should not get confused with the ciliated columnar because they are present in the bronchi here they are talking about the alveoli that's why option 1 simple squamous epithelium is the correct answer okay next question number 138 the group which has three chambered heart of course it is amphibians right toad and snake should be the correct answer to this question next the formation of sperm takes place in so prostate gland vas deferens testis bladder so the correct answer should be testis of course this one i think will be a little tough question 
because uh, we did not expect any question from reproduction actually so this i think is a little tough question especially for uh, pm students this will become little tough okay next question number 140 the correct sequence of transport of impulses in reflex arc so uh, this reflex arc if you see the order uh, when see for example you are touching uh, the flame of a candle maybe or you are getting some uh, stimulus for example in the form of pain by heat then first that uh, signals will go to a receptor then sensory neuron then spinal cord and then again it will come back as a relay neuron motor neuron and then to effector then you feel the pain okay so all this happens so instantly that you won't understand anything this procedure anyway okay so the correct answer is option 1 this is the correct sequence of transport of impulses in our reflex arc okay next question number 141 you have to match the following four limbs of frog and bird either homologous analogous or fossils wing of a bat preserved traces of living organisms such a easy question see here the correct answer should be option 3 because preserved traces of living organisms is fossil right three should be b and wing of bat uh, and wing of uh, bird they are analogous organs means similar functions different origins and four limbs of frog and bird they are homologous only because common origin but they are having different functions we have discussed all this in the class anyway okay i think we have discussed it in the paid course only okay next question number 142 cups with broken handles can be used as feeding vessels for birds this come under reduce repurpose reuse recycle it comes under repurpose why not reuse because uh, we are taking the utility of that cup actually okay see when a product will have no use then at that time uh, we thinks uh, something to uh, use it in some other useful purpose its actual purpose is not helping us okay that product we are not able to use it for its actual purpose but we are using it for some other useful purpose so example can be crocked cracker your cups with broken handles you can use them to grow small plants and you can also use them to feed uh, birds like put some water and keep it in that cup so repurpose will be the correct answer to this question okay next question number 143 the gastric glands present in the wall of human stomach secretes see whenever gastric glands or stomach comes in the question you should know that it is hydrochloric acid okay hydrochloric acid pepsin and mucus so gastric glands in uh, stomach they are secreting hydrochloric acid pepsinogen and gastrin also that the gastrin means uh, actually that is a mucosa okay clear right so now coming to the conclusion that whether the science part was uh, easy or tough or moderate according to me the science part was uh, not tough i cannot say moderate also it was little more than easy it was less moderate okay the or you can say that uh, only few questions were like two or three questions were only tough questions remaining all questions were easy questions but the questions were uh, judging your uh, presence of mind that's all okay we cannot even say that these are twisted questions they were just judging your actual knowledge and uh, your concept learning and your presence of mind okay so compared to maths science was very easy okay friends so this was on your request uh, please do share this uh, video as much as possible and help your friends and other aspirants and uh, there is a tet uh, in uh, telangana also it seems so many aspirants have uh, written to me uh, for this class so i really hope that uh, all of you will be happy by watching this class and this class helps you all okay thank you all the best bye